listening to Movie Reviews and More with Brian Sebastian, only on L.A. Talk Radio. Hey, it's Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More. Welcome, everybody. Here we are, September 26th. It's a birthday, and I'm happy to have everybody in the studio. We have co-host Zoriana Kitt. Hello. We have Jenny Worth, Worth at Fitness, and we have Terry Marie, one of my good friends. Hello, everybody. From way back. I want to thank Ching Tao. Richard Yang, thank you for dropping these off. Ching Tao out of China. Ching Tao, uh, almost forgot how to say thank you in Chinese. Zhai Zhi. And Provincial of Aka out of Blaine Lake, Saskatchewan, Canada. Thank you, Paul Ribbon and Susan Post for that. Uh, man, so it was a busy week, obviously, with things going on. Uh, we just had Emmys. And I was, it was like a blur to me last week. We, we went to Celebrity Connected Gifting Suite, and then after that I was so tired, I didn't even watch the show the next day, so I have no idea who did, but I saw the post and everything going on, which was interesting. You went, what did you think of Celebrity Connected? And you brought your a little friend of yours. Yes, I brought my daughter, Olivia. And, she was uh, so cute. <laughs> she had a lot of fun, not, not necessarily because of the actual... Uh, uh, vendors that were there, but you know, she had a fun time seeing some of the celebrities, some of the younger generations on on shows that cater to her age group. I couldn't tell you for the life of me who no. they are or what shows they're on, but they were there, and she certainly posed for a few selfies and had a blast. So thank you for having us there. There was a kid there from uh, one of the new Disney shows, wasn't there? You know, it's funny. There's always a lot of people coming. Um, Chosen Jacobs, who's in uh, it. He started from Celebrity Connected a year ago doing red carpet interviews, and then he got Hawaii Five-0, and then he got It. Now he's got a sequel to It. There was a dog with its own Instagram account that was mm -hmm. there as a celebrity guest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there's been like three of them come. One of them is uh, Tiff. He always shows up. I think he's got like 100,000 followers on his Instagram, which is quite interesting. This was a corgi, right? If I remember correctly, uh -huh. it was a, a corgi yeah. that... Yeah, you, yeah. It's, it's almost like if you hold your phone down to him, like, wow, he's got more followers than any of us. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Anyhow, we have Jenny Worth, and I'm mm -hmm. so glad that you're here. I saw you and met you a year ago at Venice Beach, and all of a sudden I saw, what's, who is this woman jumping up on these things? I didn't know what the hell they were. But all of a sudden I saw so many people having fun doing it, and that was exciting to see. Talk about that, and then talk about where you came from. Okay, so they're jump boots, and I got into them back in 2011 when I first moved out to California from Florida, and I started teaching classes, and I'm out there, and then I loved them so much because they take away 80% of all impact, and I have bad back and knee problems from all the years of impact from to gymnastics and tumbling on the wood floors. So I got into them, and I love them, and I dance in them, you have fun in them, you burn twice as many calories it takes away the impact it's a core workout and so my clients started seeing me in them and they loved them too and they're like oh can we do this with you and then i just started collecting boots collecting boots and then they buy theirs so now i've gotten like a team of people we have like an army and we just you got a lot of people yeah we jump everywhere and um we go to long beach we go to huntington my goal is to get at the rose bowl out there one saturday or sunday uh -huh and jump out there and just get it. They're really big in uh, Spain and South America, but the U.S. hasn't caught on to them. And I feel like everybody's missing out on all the fun because you can be a kid again. There's like 33 benefits from them. There are just so many benefits that besides having fun, when you get into like the benefits of them, it's just amazing. So I just jump around in these and that's how I stay fit now at 40 and I have a son and I gained 85 pounds when I got pregnant with him. So I never really thought I would be able to get in this kind of shape again. I was in contest shape about eight weeks ago. I competed for the first time in 14 years. That was in Florida, right? In Florida at the yep. Tampa Pro. Yep. So I never thought I was gonna- How'd you do? I took third. So I hung with a 20 year old. So yeah. I was really proud. Yeah, Congratulations. That's good. Congratulations. So I've had to re-modify my routine because I've had I have a, a generating disc bone to bone already, and right. I have a bulging disc of five millimeters, and I have out of place vertebrae. So my full twist, high impact uh, days are over. But I can still show people what fitness is: push ups, handstands, couple flips, and be active at 40. So I just wanted to show people you know that you can do this years later and still be fit at 40 you don't have to give up because you have a kid or you gained 85 pounds or whatever it is the skin will end up sucking back down to a certain extent as long as you don't keep yo-yo in it like a rubber band eventually it's not going to go back 
it's not as tight as it was, but I was able to hang with the young girls and show people that there's not an age on fitness. You don't have to stop because you have a back problem or this. Just work around it. There's always a way around something that you can always stay in shape. So I just wanted to help motivate the moms and you know everybody that's thought maybe they couldn't do something because with a child when you're prepping it's way different this time around like everything is way different you everything can't. with a child is way different yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything but you know i think it's the 40 once you start entering your 40s i think really it starts being re- truly the best years of your lives because you 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 know so much more and that the mental awareness that you didn't have at that younger age in your 20s just everything sort of comes together and gels as you go through your 40s and into your 50s which i just turned in july (laughs) well yeah we'll talk about yours right yours what (laughs) 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 how you started Um, because you come from a whole different background well i started competing three years ago yeah um, at the age of 46, and the first show I did was um, Muscle Beach, and I actually won over a bunch of 20-year-old olds, <sighs> same kind of like that, but I won first place, and I was shocked, and then I was addicted to it. So then I did um, NPC, I did Fitness Universe, I have placed twice in Fitness Universe first place. Explain to the audience what NPC is. MP, uh, National Physique Council, which yep. is um, the amateur version of what you're what you're doing. IFBB. Yeah, so... Um, but it's a good place to start. I did it more to challenge myself, because right. it's, it's a mental challenge. Um, I'm probably gonna compete again after January to push myself, um, because uh, I wanna be a role model again for women you know, over the age of 45, 50. Again, you don't have to fall apart. That you're, you're staying healthy and staying active will keep you young. And I also have a podcast called Mad Health where I talk about health and fitness, but it's not necessarily geared towards fitness competitors. It's just a healthy lifestyle and how women can stay healthy. I and think that part, mm-hmm. of, part of the uh, working out aspect, uh, I think sometimes people get uh, overwhelmed by that and feel that it's a chore or something that they have to do against their will, but they have to in order to look a certain way. And I think, mm-hmm. I think if you can wrap it around yourself that it's a lifestyle, and and actually at our age, it's more um, uh, mental health at this point mm-hmm. because what you get from the endorphins, what you get of starting off your day with a workout, does so much more for you mentally right. than looking good could ever be yeah see i train every day i probably train two hours a day so i'm still training like an athlete but i'm not doing the strict diet but i'm eating healthy i'm eating you know a clean diet i'm not eating G- nothing packaged no gmos a lot of and how and hard is that explain that well it after you get used to it your body craves it like if i eat mcdonald's i i physically feel ill yep. so your body after a while kind of rejects that kind of food so it becomes more of a good you get yourself into a good habit mm-hmm. and a good way of eating and you get it you get addicted to those endorphins when you work out so again it's just you slowly have to just change your lifestyle mm-hmm. oh you like to work out in the morning or the afternoon i like to work out at night jenny morning see i'm an afternoon person when i can because i i don't know i just get up and start doing stuff early in the morning all the stuff that we have to do movies and all the invites and i'm like let me just do something in the afternoon just to break up the monotony of things. Mm. You do Pilates or yoga or something? Because you runner. look good. I'm a runner. Oh, that's right, and right. I, and I get up at 5 and I do that in the morning. Other, If I don't do it at that hour, then once I check my emails, there is no yes. going back. Yeah. And the world takes over. Yep. So I have to do it first thing when it's dark, when everyone else is sleeping, when it's my time and there's no interruptions. I think you have to listen to your body clock. For me, I don't function very well in the morning. So <laughs> <laughs> I like to get my stress from the day taken out of my workout mm-hmm. at around you know 5 o'clock. And that's, that's when I work out the best. That's when I'm the most focused. So. I think anybody's working out, kind of listen to what your body yeah. says to you. you and know? I'll call her sometimes, she goes, I'm at the gym working out. <laughs> what do you really do? What's what do your you, day job? What's my day? Well, what, I've got a lot of things that I do now. So um, I'm, at, I'm a businesswoman, um, yeah. so I work in medical sales. And then I also have, besides my health podcast, I am one of those rare um, people that does entertainment hosting here in LA that's a Republican. Mm-hmm. So I have a Republican podcast with three other women. It's called The Mad Tea Show. So we talk about 
things that are going on in the world right now. Um, I um, think it's really important that we all talk. I have the view that the left and the right are both a mess. Um, I'm in the middle, but again, you know, like people are too far right, they're too far left. People are arguing and nobody's having any conversations anymore. So that's kind of like where I want to kind of go with that that show and like bring people together, listen to different ideas. Right. Um, we the two the two or sorry the three other hosts that we have. Um, one does a show on prepping, so it's called the Mad Prepping Show, which is excellent because all the stuff that's going on right now with the hurricanes, California's due for an earthquake, so we all need to be prepared for these kind of things because you just never know. And then the other host. Um, has a show um, called Mad Deep, which we talk about sex trafficking, human trafficking, which is a huge issue right now that not a lot of people want to talk about, but it's being brought more and more to the open. On that note, um, you said a few things that uh, have prompted me to to think about a few things. Um, I'm a member of the Broadcast Film Critics Association, so I see a lot of movies, uh, but I also run the media department at Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, and we're an anti-poaching organization that, that, that saves, defends, and conserves uh, the ocean wildlife. And um, one of our advisory board members is John Paul DeGioia. Some people may know him as uh, the founder of John Paul Mitchell hair care products. Mm -hmm. Others might drink his tequila Patron. Um, others might know him from, uh, he's got pet products. Uh, but to us, he's an advisory board member and we have a ship named after him. And um, he is the subject of a documentary that's out right now called Good Fortune. And uh, his story is uh, a great story because he started off with nothing. He was raised in the foster care system. He was homeless. He hung out with the Hells Angels. And then from there, he became a billionaire. And then from becoming a billionaire, he became a philanthropist. And he always says, you know, let's not talk about the 1% or the 99%. He goes, people think I'm the, you look at me and you think I'm the 1%. He goes, but I am also the 99% this is where I came from and that's yeah. who he is inside so forget about 99% forget about 1% let's just all get together because our oceans are dying Absolutely. climate change yeah. is real and you can fight about who's 1% who's 99% but in the meantime if we don't do something neither the 99% nor the 1% are going to be here and He's really, truly somebody that I looked up to. I was with him over the weekend at the Environmental Media Awards. He received an amazing award. Other honorees, Natalie Portman was there, a lot of celebrities. And in this documentary, he said something that really, really resonated with me. And, um, and, and truly, I think it applies to everyone, no matter if you're Democrat or Republican, 99%, 1%. He said, in the end, it'll all be okay. And if it's not, not okay, okay, then it's, it's not, not the, the end. end. And that is something that has truly found a place in my heart and in, in the way I try to lead my life. Because there are days where you truly feel like this is not okay. And that my life is just, ugh. But then I think, you know, in the end, it'll be okay. Because right now, if it's not okay, then that just means it's not the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you just keep plugging away and you just keep going. So if you have the opportunity to see this documentary, it is called Good Fortune. And it is about him and how he went from nothing to something. And it is incredible and it is inspiring. And currently, our ship named after him, the MV John Paul de Joria, talking about disaster preparedness, it is currently in the Caribbean, and we are doing disaster relief for those islands affected by Hurricane Irma mm -hmm. and Hurricane uh, Maria. And uh, on Saturday, we left Curacao with a whole bunch of supplies. Uh, we landed in Martinique. We picked up other supplies. And today, we are in Dominica. We're working. We're partnered with the Red Cross. We're bringing aid to all of these islands. Dominica has been decimated completely. And so today, tomorrow, the next few days, that's where we are. We're distributing blankets and tarps and water. We also have a lot of dog food and cat food because you can't forget the animals. These no, are our non-human no. brothers and sisters definitely also you, you know, need help as well. And um, you know, I, I'm really proud of, of our organization and of John Paul DeGioia. He's, he's 
funding the fuel for this operation. So if anyone wants to contribute, you can go to seashepherd.org. There's a donate button there, and uh, and you can donate to this relief mission and be part of the help to provide to all the the islands that are affected. We're going to go to to Antigua. We're going to go to Barbuda. We'll be in the Virgin Islands. Um, so. Um, Definitely hop on board and, and join us. Yeah, See, and that's great work, too. Yeah. Isn't Puerto Rico still without power now? Or Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's a tragedy what's going on over there. And everybody's so detra distracted with football right now <laughs> and, and all these crazy things, yeah. and, you know, people are hurting. But one thing that I am noticing, though, is I have friends that were in Houston who lost their homes, and they've called me and told me that people are coming together of all colors, all, yes. all, all religions, all... Um, political views coming together to help each other so basically i think we're all good we just we have to really just we have to come together more jenny you know what it's like to grow up in miami right going through hurricanes or tornadoes right that's not fun it doesn't matter who you are it's just like okay everybody board up everything because you know what it's why well, i know what it's like to lose stuff that's not fun talk about living there and then why you came to the west coast um well with the hurricanes you prepare either you're preparing for nothing or you're preparing for something so people are, are like would you prefer an earthquake or over a hurricane i'm like I i'd do. rather just go down <laughs> and not know about it yeah. so there's two different looks on it and um, that's why i moved to the west coast i had those choices in, in 1986 and i thought about that you prefer earthquake and landslides right absolutely <laughs> Me too yes because, you know, no you know I've been through, I covered Hurricane Gloria in 1985 when I was in news, uh, in news radio in Connecticut. I'm like, well, this is interesting. What's a hurricane doing in Connecticut? You know, that's when I knew something was going on back then. And then you see all the stuff. I'm like, good thing I don't live in Florida. That's why I didn't move to Florida. But I almost did. I'm like, do I want to go to Miami and watch the water levels rise up? I don't think so. <laughs> but you know from living down there. Yeah. I think it was Hurricane Katrina. Was huh. it 1998? Was no, it? Katrina was a little bit later. Which one was 1998? The one that was right before Katrina. It's the next biggest one next to Andrew that came through. I don't I remember right now. But it was. It was uh, like uh, but again, those things. I mean, that's what you ha what happens on that. I just saw a great documentary. I'm not sure if I told you called Two Degrees. We're at one degrees right now, and it talks about when we reach two degrees. You know, everything rising up, all the stuff. Whether you believe it or not, it is happening. Yeah. That that we know. And again, you lived there, so yeah. you knew what was going on. Yeah. You know, and when I see The Rock, I, I tease him. I'm like, when are you moving out of Miami? He yeah. goes, ah, yeah, I see what's going on. but <laughs> I mean, I just watched Inconvenient Truth, the sequel, and they're showing footage of Florida and the flooding that happened like six months ago, a year ago, and I'm watching it now going like, this documentary is even more relevant than it was six months ago because of everything that happened in Florida. You watched chasing coral which is all about the coral bleaching you know and you and think then you watch chasing ice well, exactly exactly and and you know in your house when you set the thermostat you know you don't think there's much of a difference between 77 and 78 degrees because it's it's in your home but when you look at the ocean our planet and how one degree makes a huge difference in the balance of the ecosystem yeah when you uh when you're not working out and you have kids now right you yeah, know so one. i'm sure you grew up on watching all the disney films right yeah <laughs> she's like yep i can't wait to go back to the gym and work out because i don't want to watch anymore right now until <laughs> i get back what you know what do you like when you get a chance to decompress when you're not in the gym well let's see i watch a lot of documentaries on netflix or I, w I watch intervention a lot i don't know why my yeah. boyfriend's like if you weren't into fitness i think you'd be an inner you would talk people through you'd be in a rehab center or something well that's what you're doing you're yeah. talking them into getting fit and being yeah. healthy so i don't watch much tv i don't so but i every once in a while i turn it on but i watch i watch the news for the first time in a long time the other day and i i just got depressed i'm like oh, i know what's going on and we have to, i have to realize it's what's happening but like i was watching it because my family's in florida so i turned right. it on to watch the hurricane to see who's yeah. going to get hit and it's like, wow, there's just so much bad stuff. I just wish they would just say one positive thing at the end on the news. Just one thing. Just say something, one good thing that someone did. What That's was it like for you watching it and having your family there? That's not easy. 
No, because I, I felt like, okay, I'm waiting. It's either going to hit my mom in Tallahassee. It's going to hit my grandmother in Miami. It's going to hit my sister because they didn't know what toy it was going to go. So right. I'm like, someone's going to get hit. So I felt like I was living back in it because it, I swear when you're waiting for it, it's like every hour is just for eternity because you don't know. You're like, okay, we're preparing for it. We're praying for it. Like I said, I'd rather just be in an earthquake and just it happen. Well, see, I have, <laughs> <laughs> I have family actually, and I don't know if you know this, Brian, but I have family in Florida also. My uncle and my cousin live in Miami, so I was kind of a little freaked out because my uncle was saying that he wasn't going to leave his house, and then finally my cousin, you know, got her, him to to leave. But it just it gets scary, you know, especially when you have family. Right. And I have another friend there in Tampa so I it affected me too I was worried to death about them so but they're all okay um, no one lost they didn't lose their house but I do have a friend in Houston who lost their house but what you're saying about the news is I do wish that they would talk about some of these good stories for an example my friend that is in Houston she was about people coming together why don't they show that yeah well Ratings, I, I think. Well, Sea Shepherd mm -hmm. is out there doing good work, and yeah, we well, are distributing that. aid. Yes. And we, that's what we're doing, and that's important work. And even though uh, we are pr primarily a marine conservation society, when it, when it comes to natural disasters, you help everybody. Mm -hmm. And our ship is there to be of service, and we are, are there to, to bring aid. And, and I know the talk is all about, you know, who, where's it going to go next? Where's it going to hit? I think just the best thing you could do is educate yourself about climate change. Watch movies like Inconvenient Truth and Chasing Coral. Understand what's going on and how you can change your lifestyle slightly to help that. I mean, we talk about changing your lifestyle if you want to be fit. You know, don't eat this, eat that, get up and work out. But what about changing your lifestyle for planet Earth. One of the biggest problems, I think, is probably plastic. Yes, plastic that's, that's is... the problem, and that's just something everybody can be aware of. Yeah, we do a lot of beach cleanups, and uh, it's the single-use plastics that are most disastrous. When Sea Shepherd is out there uh, cleaning up beaches, you know, when you get straws or balloons, things that you only and use one time. And it affects the animals time. a lot. Yes, yes, it hurts the animals. It hurts, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, don't use a straw. Opt out. Opt out of using a straw. You don't need a straw. Balloons, please don't release them into the sky. They get entangled with birds. Uh, turtles in the ocean think that it's uh, some type of sea life and they'll ingest them. Just don't. Don't. There's, you don't need all those things for your life. I was curious where Worth It Fit came from. How did you come up with that? Um, well, it's my last name. Yep. And my dad at his house outside of his driveway on the um, the gate, it says worth it. So I went back home a couple years ago and I said, that's what I want my uh, business to be out here, worth it fitness. So that's where it came from, my, my dad. And my grandmother, she came up with it and she has just turned 98 this year. So both of my Is she working out too? No, but she's still all there. She still drives. That's she good. still does everything. Uh, the other, my other one's still alive too. They just turned ninety eight. She wow. has Alzheimer's. So, but yeah, that's where it came from. My last name. Talk about this twenty one day challenge. I think you have. So the twenty one day jump start is a nutritional plan. It, it jump starts anyone's whatever they want to do in life because it takes twenty one days to make or break a habit. So it's all geared around most people don't know what they go to i had clients that go like jen i didn't even realize i went to wine every night i was drinking a bottle but you know there's certain things that people go to candy 21 chocolate. days 21 days yeah wow i never you knew just that. yeah so i have people that follow it one uh my brother-in-law just followed it. he lost 10 pounds no exercise just the diet alone just changing it and he didn't do it to lose weight he did it because he has at 18 he has 18 years old he has um uh, kidney stones he's not healthy so he goes I just wanted to get healthy right so in the mix of it all he lost weight and it's you know six meals throughout the day there's a list of stuff that you can pick from and it just cuts out all the the garbage and like gets sugar. people the sugar exactly the sugar is what's the demon mm -hmm. and I tell people they're like oh but I'm eating clean but they don't mention the what alcohol sugar? they drink yes. you know it's like yeah. okay alcohol is sugar whatever way you want to look at it it's gonna take you down 
Well, and that's one of the reasons why I like this vodka. I didn't know. <laughs> no, seriously. Sorry about alcohol. Sorry. Let's talk about the alcohol. I did not know until I started talking to a lot of the girls that people in fitness like to drink vodka. Because it's, not it's as the much better sugar. one. Yeah. yeah. I uh, see how they why? smiled. Well, why? It just it has less sugar, but it. Um, I, I'm not really sure the exact reason, but it doesn't convert to sugar like normal alcohol does. Vodka in general. Vodka yeah. in general, yeah. But uh, the, p- another thing people don't realize is that one of the main causes of cancer is sugar. Sugar feeds cancer, mm-hmm. so that is like the number one thing that people really need to to get rid of in their diet. And it's hidden in everything. Of course. I mean, fat-free food has got hidden sugar in there. People don't realize that they're like, oh, it's fat-free, but it's got all this sugar there. So just yeah, people need to pay attention to labels. Yeah, exactly. And that's Definitely. one of the things I was talking to about Paul when I picked Provencio because it's good. I mean, it's you, good. you, Terry, Jennifer, Tracy, <laughs> all the girls in fitness love this vodka for that particular reason. Plus the water is clean where he's from. And you know, you're from Canada, so you yes. know. And he's got he's got two tiers of that fresh, clean water. So he's wanting to bottle the water, and he's tr- wanting to figure out how not to use plastic right now and yeah. how to really do that. It's a smooth taste to it. Yes. Yeah. And I was I don't drink vodka. I do now, <laughs> but I did, but only because they convinced me. I had no idea. So that's why I hang out with these young ladies because they're they're educating me for what I may or may not know. But it helps. Again, I listen to women. <laughs> you, you turned me on a sea shepherd. <laughs> you know, Jenny, show the show your uh, things that you have over there. She turned me on to those, and Terry, she's just corruptible anyhow. So I'm what? <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, Brian, I brought the pair for you to put on too. I know you did. <laughs> Talk about to hold them up high, and I want to see how long did it take you to create these here? Because you talked about I didn't even know they were outside the U.S. Yeah, so they were created outside the U.S. and um, they haven't really made it big here yet. Do you think they will? They've been out since 1998. Wow. Yeah, so. But I didn't know about it till I saw you. I was literally walking down Venice Beach. I was going to go and watch one of the shows. I'm like, she's jumping up and down with a bunch of her friends, and they're, just, they're all happy. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> so I stopped. I'm like, what's your name? Hi, I'm Jenny Worth. She's jumping like this, and she's got this big-ass smile on her face, and I was like, okay, maybe I should try this. Can and you, that's how we met. Can you run in those things? Yeah, or? so they... They actually were created for people with knee and back problems. So there's a lady that ran a half a marathon in them because she couldn't run anymore because of her knees. Yeah. So she ran in these. It does make it harder and easier all at the same time because you're carrying weight now. But yeah, these things are incredible. I fell in love with them, like I said, like five years ago. And this is the only form of cardio I do. I don't get on machines. I used to be a big time runner. I used to run like 15 miles a day, but I just, I can't anymore because of my knees and back. Right. I prefer to do dance moves in them, but there's some people that just go out and run in them. So, yeah, you can get them at jumpboots.com. Talk about kids using them. Why so, is it yeah, good for kids? So, yeah, they are. They do have kids. My son has a pair. I got him a pair. It makes kids happy. They're fun. So, eventually, I do want to start some kid classes because it. I want to bring them to the kids and show them that you can have fun and, and be fit, too. And they're, they're like being on their mini trampoline. They have their own trampoline they can run around. Run around I've never seen so many people happy before jumping on because these Because they say it's a proven fact. It, it releases endorphins and it makes you happy. And okay, all the you videos go. you see, people, they're all like, they're like, why are you guys always so smiling and jumping? Yeah. So I tell people, just put them on and try them. But I think one reason why they haven't made, made it big in the U.S. because I think people are embarrassed. They're like, you look like a fool. I'm not going to get on there and look like that. But they're not. I mean, you may look weird. You're tall. I want to be tall, so I don't mind being in them. <laughs> but they're fun. And I think people don't want to give them a chance because they're embarrassed what someone might think. But I have a bunch of guys in them. I have girls in them. You got a lot of people in them. them. Yeah. Yeah. They're a blast. So where can they come and catch up to you and and even train with you? So right now I am in Long Beach and I am training people out. We have a studio at my house and it's in Montrose. And then I have... 15 pairs of Kango jumps that I travel. So Not one, but 15. I have 15 pairs. So I have, so I can travel with the boots. And if anybody, like a gym, wants to set up a, a class, I can come. We can do a demonstration. They can try them out, see if they like them. You know, just, I will be at a gym this weekend. Um, it's a new gym in Glendale. I'm not familiar with this area at all. So this is all new for me out here. So I'm going to go show them um, how they work. But my goal is, like I said, eventually just have these out at the Rose Bowl and just have us jump around trying to get America caught That would be fun, them. actually, at the Rose Bowl. There's a lot of people that go just go like to go yeah, running and run walking over there and all the time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Talk about when you went, out, went back on stage and competed for the first time in 14 years. I mean, that's just like coming out of retirement of anything and competing. You got so many congratulations, and I had to jump on. I'm like, good for her. I was, I was so happy. I think I, I think I saw like 200 congratulations to you from that. Talk about what that feeling was like. So I started competing at an uh, early age. I, I was the youngest pro ever at the time. Uh, I started competing at 17 years old back wow. in 1996. So I got second at the Fitness Olympia back in the day in 2000, yeah. and then uh, third one year, and third one year, and then tenth. So my last year was my heart wasn't in it anymore, and I just, you know, I, I started training celebrities in Miami like Lenny Kravitz and his band. I trained A Rod and his wife. Got every, and I was more focused on the business side and just lost the love for it because, right. you know, once you lose the love for anything, it's gone. So I that goes for marriages too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. I've been through that. Yeah. yeah. So I just got out of it, and then, um, like I said, I have a team of competitors, and I'm always in the realm with them, and I don't want to tell them to do something if I can't do it. So I'm always consistently doing the diet with them and showing that look, it can be done. That you can do it, and I just kind of like she said, it's it's you challenge yourself because it's. The diet's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can't come off of it, you know. So in order to look a certain way, you have to eat a certain way. And I already have uh, hyperthyroidism, so I'm already fighting that. So I just, I always like to challenge myself and, and go places I haven't been. And I had, a, I had loose skin, you know, from having my son. Thought I was gonna have to get my breasts redone before I competed. But I started using this cream, Lipoxyderm. Yeah. It's for skin tightening, fat burning. So I said, okay, if it's for skin tightening, I wonder if I put it on my breast, what will happen? It sucked the skin down tight wow. enough that I didn't even have to get new implants. So I, I know it's crazy, but it, it worked. And hey, it worked, right? It worked, so I, it got me out of retirement. Ah, there you go. Yeah, so I thought I was gonna have to wait to get these redone, because it was them, just too loose. Give the audience your website, please. Uh, it's worthitfitness.com. Okay, Terry, give your website. Um, well, it's the Mad Tea Show dot com on Facebook and on YouTube, and then I am uh, Terry Marie nonstop on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. Is Arianna? SeaShepherd.org. And if you're interested in donating to our uh, hurricane relief mission, which is called Operation Good Pirates of the Caribbean, you can press mm -hmm. the donate button. And if you're interested in any Sea Shepherd gear, I'm wearing a t-shirt today. I've got a water bottle here. I want the water bottle. You can go to SeaShepherd.org backslash shop, and that'll take you to our e-store. And we have anything and everything there with the Sea Shepherd logo. All proceeds go to helping all the campaigns. Let's talk about this past uh, last weekend for the Emmy's Gifting Suite. Things that we saw that we like. What did you see, Terry? I like the makeup. It was uh, was it Stair? Stair, Stare yes, Cosmetics, yes. Yep. They had They're coming they, on December twelfth. Yeah, they had a really good uh, carrying case for travel that we got, and then um, they, I really like their mascara. I tried their mascara, and so yeah, it's uh, I like their I like their makeup a lot. And what else? Uh, what else did I like? Because um, you were kind of roaming around with me for a while. Yeah, I mean, there, was a, there wasn't as many vendors as there usually were, but um, obviously the vodka. Yes. <laughs> that was always good. <laughs> True. Um, and then um, the perfume people. Oh, yeah, out of Tampa, do, Florida. Yeah. Uh, Elena, that's who, that's who she was with. Yeah, it was, a, it was an organic um, perfume, which is good because our, another thing people don't realize is that our skin absorbs everything. Right. So you really want to be careful of the chemicals that you put on your skin and your hair because you soak that up. Yeah. And there's a lot of toxic chemicals in soap and in makeup, and people don't even realize it. Yeah, I'm, I'm becoming conscious of that, too, because I had used to have eczema and eczema, and, and then it went away, and then it started coming back. I don't know, from stress or whatever the case was. That's the only thing I ever had. But then again using the right products helped. I didn't, I just found out that sometimes if you're using, if you stop using gluten, that it will go away, but the doctors don't tell you that, and I didn't know that until today. A gluten allergy? In general, Well, yeah. gluten, it's a lot of people have problems with it. A lot of it is because the wheat now yeah. is full of um, GMO, and ah. it's not, because remember like, when our parents were growing up, they could eat wheat and they wouldn't get heavy? Right. It's just that there's just, the seeds are contaminated and, right. I don't know. I just that's I don't eat gluten anymore. 
Yeah. I, I try to use as many products that are organic or natural mm-hmm. or even vegan, especially when I go swimming in the ocean. Like, I'm not going to sp- use the spray on sunscreen because I, then I'm polluting the ocean. Mm-hmm. And so I, I go natural. So if anything does get in there, then you're not harming the animals in the ocean. Yeah. Uh, so we got movies coming out this weekend. Is what September 29th. So we have Flatliners. Remember the old original Flatliners? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. This. What do you think of the new one coming out? Of what you've seen with the trailer? I I don't know. I can't. I, it's I hard to see know. because you can't you can't tell even from the posters. I remember I remember going to the theater. I remember who I was with. I remember all, all, everything when I saw that original one. So um, yeah, I. I don't know. I don't know if I want to see the new one. I I, I may want to just good preserve point. my the memory of the uh, old, yeah. the first one. Uh-huh. The, the first one was really good, so I don't know. It'll it, to compare the two. The, the sequels never seem to be as good as the first one. But also, it, that's when Julia Roberts and Keeper Sutherland were dating. Were dating. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we all remember exactly. that yeah. too. And the yeah. Kingsman two came out last week again. It finished number one. Uh, that was really good. It's good to see Colin Firth. Uh, you know, and this time around, I've got Halle Berry in it. It's got Jeff Bridges in it. Did you see it this time? You get a chance? Because no. you're busy. That's why I have yeah. to always ask. They don't realize that as critics, we mm-hmm. watch a lot of movies, but we still have a life well. I'm seeing one tonight, and I'm seeing one tomorrow. So on the next show, we'll be able to talk about uh, the Mark Felt film that I'm going to see and the Lyndon B. Johnson movie starring uh, Woody Harrelson. Yeah, I, I yeah. heard good things out of Toronto. So speaking of Toronto, did you hear the attendance was down? No. Again, all film festivals, attendance is going down. It's because it's getting harder and harder to get these good movies. And as you know, Toronto was always that that place where you had to go to see the do one do all the celebrity interviews. Yeah. All the films going to be up there. They were throwing up Toronto, Venice, Telluride. Their attendance was down. And I started to see that like the last three years or even film festivals. One of my favorite film festivals is Santa Barbara Film Festival that Roger Dowling runs out there and he just knows how to pick great films yeah. and he picks them the month of October and then they hit next year the yeah. following year and he's got everybody lined up I'm like how does this guy do that and he's just good at what he does so I look forward to seeing that and Rogers will be done coming soon too talking about everything coming up in Santa Barbara I need to talk about a gifting suite that I went to. Oh, uh, yes. Yep. Uh, it was uh, Doris Bergman's Emmy Style Lounge and Party. And I've, I've been to, to her suites before. They're usually at the Fig and Olive, which has amazing food. It's on Melrose Place. And um, uh, this suite was very different from the, the Connected one, the Celebrity Connected one. Some of the products were, uh, and I want to give a shout out to some of them because they were interesting. And I, I can't say that I have them personally, and I can't say that, oh, uh, I love them, but I loved looking at them. Um, there's a company called Skinside, and it's drinkable skincare. And oh, wow. uh, so it's collagen shots. Mm-hmm. So it's going directly into your bloodstream, which uh, I, I'm a vitamin uh, consumer. I love trying anything and everything, and something that's drinkable and tastes good and is good for you it definitely fascinated me. Uh, there was a lot of. Um, Clothing vendors, single dress dresses, which are very beautiful. Sue Wong had some couture gowns oh, that I like she was Susie giving. Wong. Yeah, she was fabulous. Um, uh, there was Olympia International Luggage. They had these cool backpacks that were also uh, luggage, so you had the option of rolling it or putting it on your back. Uh, there were watches by Signature Innovative Group, founded by an, uh, a pilot, a female pilot, which oh, wow. they looked very cool, and the fact that it was a woman pilot, which is generally kind of a man's world, I found very fascinating. Uh, jewelry included Jean Vixen jewelry, Twisted Silver, and my favorite, and I I can say this from my own personal experience is is uh, the Serenity blessing bracelets which I wear and the company is called My Saint My Hero and all these bracelets are blessed and they ha- uh, they have um, a cross and and you know it, for me it just anytime things get rough it, I look down on mm-hmm. my my wrist and it's like a little touchstone to just remind me that you know to have faith to keep going. Um, there was makeup by Rima Beauty. Uh, there was uh, Montrose Regenerative Cosmetic and Laser Center was giving out gift certificates for various uh, beauty treatments. They had a whole menu of things. And there was also stuff for men. You know, Usually these places tend to cater a little bit more towards women, I find. But um, there was some menswear by Signature Innovation Group and Art Lewin Bespoke. So um, it was a pretty pretty good suite and uh it had a little bit of everything so um 
Uh, kudos to Doris Bergman. Yeah, see, that's always good to know because there's many different ones out there. Some are good, some are really good, and some of them just aren't. But, you know, it's, it's not that any of them are bad. Sometimes it's just what it may be. It could be one out of MTV. It might be catered towards the teens. Or if you obviously mm -hmm. if you do anyone. Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards, exactly. they do cater towards the younger kids. MTV yeah. is always a little edgier. Oscars are a lot more high end. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it, like you said, it does depend on the age group. And, and yeah. your daughter saw something that she liked. My daughter. And that was nice to see. Yeah, y there, uh, at Celebrity Connected, there was some glitter type of makeup. Oh, and, I saw that. And so she, of course, took one of every color. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, was the, that was the diamonds that yeah. people were walking around? Yeah. 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 Could you imagine jumping up with diamonds and you get your forehead? <laughs> but they look good. I I almost wanted to go get one, but I, I didn't, wasn't that brave. So, <laughs> But it did look good. Yeah. So coming up what do you got coming up now what do i have coming up now well we do our show once a week yep and what's the times my it's on um saturday at five pacific standard time mm -hmm. and then um we have other shows that we do but those are just kind of sporadic so but the the scheduled mad tea show is every saturday at five o'clock and why should people turn in um, i mean because i've watched well it's uh if you like politics you want to kind of discuss what's going on today in the world, um, follow us. And then your three other co-hosts? Uh, my three other co-hosts, um, we've got Roxicella, yep. and we've got Jenny, and then we have a, a guest host every week. And your website again? And the website again is themadtshow.com, um, mad sorry, Mad T on Facebook, Mad T on Twitter, Mad T on Instagram, and then my personal um, web or my personal site is Nonstop Terry Marie on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Worth it, fitness. All right. So, what do you have coming up before we get out of here? Uh, we have always have jump class on Fridays. It's called Genergy Jump at No Limits Fitness Academy in uh, Long Beach. Right. And and on Sundays we have another one. We all have a team of competitors going into the muscle contest, the NPC muscle contest, November the 4th. And I got, um, um, I'm training people out of Montrose now, so I'm taking on clients in Montrose. And um, I think that's about it for now. Until and your clients time. do very, very well, too. They don't do they? very, very well. That I, must be gratifying for you. It is. I do it for that because yeah. I love m changing people's lives and that's why I do it. I love seeing people change their life and it, it goes into everything else. When you're fit, it, you, it's another way of life and you just, like, you, like she was saying, it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle mm -hmm. and that's what I try to promote. It's not a diet here, it's then a it's lifestyle. Then it's not hard. Then it's, it's not, not hard. Yeah. That's what I tell them, it's yeah. not a diet, it's a lifestyle. All you gotta do is change certain things in your life and I try to touch base with one person, like it, if it doesn't work for them, Okay, what do you do for a living? You're a nurse, you're not gonna be able to eat a meal then? Well, you can have a, some nuts in your pocket and eat them. Mm -hmm. So it's just a different lifestyle for them. Or rice cakes. Yeah, or <laughs> rice cakes, you know? So I do have uh, Worth It Fitness, and if anybody's interested in the classes or they're interested in me bringing all the boots, I'm more than welcome to do that. Like I said, I have 15 pairs. I'm trying to share the love of the Kango Jumps. I think that's great. And they can reach me on Worth It Fitness, uh, Instagram or they can email me at uh, worthitwarrior21 at gmail.com or they can contact me through my email. it takes 21 days to break it. takes 21 <laughs> days to make or break a habit. And that 21 yeah. days is important, isn't it? Yes, and those are available. Um, I just switched my website over from Jenny Worth Fitness to Worth It Fitness, so it's in the middle of trying to get everything up. Right. So yeah, they can just contact me and then I'll get a direct message, but I'm just trying to teach people to the lifestyle of healthy and fit. And you might compete one more time? Um, I'm going into, cause I want to qualify for the Olympia. Cause back in the day, top three would have qualified me. I was trying to get on the stage with Oksana before she retired, but right. I just missed it. So next year I'm, I didn't think it was possible this year. I didn't even think about the Olympia until Tim Gardner was like, do you know you could qualify for the Olympia? I'm like, Tim, I'm just trying to get on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just one step at a time. So this year I'm coming back because I took second, third behind the girl that took second. So to be honest with you, my, as a little girl, was a dream to be an Olympic gymnast. So my goal was to win the Olympia and I didn't. So I feel like I can but come back. But you were back. close. I was close and I feel like I can come back and I could, I could do that. So yeah. I'm going to go in for the Olympia next year. And Oksana's going to be here either late she, November or early December. Oh, awesome. I'm just waiting for That's her travel awesome. schedule. She's coming. 
So and and, and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger adores her, <laughs> which is great. I did win the Arnold Classic in two thousand and one. You too, did, so, yeah. And that's 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 world renowned. So just trying to help help people live the health and fifty life health and fitness lifestyle. <laughs> and you're doing that, and I'm happy for you doing that too. And and obviously your clients are happy too. Yeah. Especially those guys, they look really good. Yeah. And women they must be just work. going nuts over your clients. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Rihanna. All right, cshepherd.org is the website where you can find Sea Shepherd and all the work that we do. You can get involved. We have chapters all over the world. We have 20 chapters in North America alone. So if you want to get involved and make a difference, uh, look on our website, find the nearest chapter, and participate in everything that we do, be it beach cleanups or, or you can volunteer on one of our ships. We have a Navy of 12 ships around the world, all engaged in different type of campaigns. Sign up, fill out an application, become a crew member, and do your part in saving the world's oceans. You can also follow individual ships. Each of them have their own Instagram account, Facebook account, Twitter account. I like that. I think that's really important. So right now, with our hurricane relief efforts. It's being done by the MV John Paul de Joria. That's the name of the boat. You can go on its Facebook account, on its Instagram account, and you can see photos of our relief efforts there. And you can follow us for for from here to eternity and, and just you'll get the latest updates and definitely do your part. Donate and educate yourself. Watch the documentaries. You mentioned you love watching documentaries on Netflix. Chasing Coral, take a look at that. Chasing Ice. Chasing Ice, take a look at that. Inconvenient Truth. And of course, John Paul DeGioia's documentary, Good Fortune, a very inspirational man, a really great Sea Shepherd supporter. Like I said, we have the boat named after him, and um, it's truly a, an amazing man. Remember, if it's not okay, <laughs> it's not the end, because in the end, it'll all be okay. That's a great tagline. I like that. I didn't know he said that, and so yeah. I, I started saying that, too. I, I yeah. really like that. And then, you know what? I watched uh, last week, I watched on PBS, uh, Ken Burns' Vietnam War which is really, really good to get a chance to see it. You see it from all sides and what people went through. Uh, the last four episodes are this week, and it's really touching. I'm on John McCain right now, mm. so I've got, you know, it's a 10-part series. It's on PBS. Check your local stations. Obviously, and I love Ken Burns. He's one of my favorite documentary films. You get a chance to see anything with Ken Burns, whether it's the Civil War, the history of jazz, uh, the history of baseball, uh, the natural parks, uh, how the park started. Uh, have you ever seen Martin Luther King, the I Have a Speech, who's standing next to him? It's not a police officer. It's a national park ranger. Very wow. interesting. And so it gives the history of how all that came about. Someday he'll, are, he'll do documentaries about what's going on right now. I'm, I'm waiting for the Sean Spicer, Ken Burns documentary. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's kind of coming up next. You never know. It'll be interesting. And you know what? I've got to think eventually, obviously, because I love the vodka and I, and I like what it's doing. Again, that clean water out of Canada, you know from being in Canada, having clean water, clean air is really, really important. Yes. Obviously, and obviously thinking and thanking uh, Ken, um, Jean Janias and Diana from Celebrity mm-hmm. Connected because we find a lot of good things from them and it's fun to be around. I found Ching Tao from them. Who would have known I would have championed the Chinese beer? But it's really, really good and the girls like this too. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm listening to my friends on the fitness side of things who would have known. I listen to women. You guys are very, very important. I'm here to support. So that's good. And then, so I'm Brian Sebastian. This is Movie Reviews and More. I want to thank everybody for always tuning in because our numbers are really grown. I'm really excited. And I love when Zoriana is here because it takes the pressure off. Aww. Plus, she's better to look at. <laughs> and she gives a great presentation, you know, presentation of Sea Shepherd, which is really, really important because she turned me on to that. Who would have known? We're Who a movement. Known? You were a movement, and you can't stop a movement, just like in your businesses. You you can stop an individual, but you can't stop a movement. Sea Shepherd is a global movement, so come join us. And I got to think before I go real quick, tree sisters, because, you know, without any trees, just like without having anything when it comes to underwater environment, yeah. we don't exist. So tree sisters, Claire DuBois coming on in three weeks. She's coming in from the U.K. That'll be fun. That'll be a great show. So we will see you next time. So Brian, Sebastian, movie reviews and more youtube.com forward slash movie reviews the letter and more please subscribe and if you see someone without a smile please give them one of yours we will see you next week you're listening to movie reviews and more with brian sebastian only on la talk radio